Yeah, done. What's the overriding feeling after seeing your team fight back in the second half? Um, yeah, a couple and pretty close between them. Probably d disappointed, obviously. Um, incredibly proud of, of some of what we managed to produce. And um, yeah, resilience, togetherness, quality. Um, so l large spells of the, the game where we look like a very close to being an excellent team and then some little bits that we, we, we need to improve obviously um, two, the two goals in the second half are re just really disappointing because they're down to sort of detail and corner goal at a tough time um, sort of lose our man strangely as well um, wasn't a difficult one to pick up and we lose him then yeah, the throwing at the end. So it's not how we defend throw-ins to, to allow Man United to throw that forward into a, an attacking player when we've just worked so hard to get back to 3-3. Free free. Isn't what we do. Um, but, you know, you are you are tested in the Premier League. The the emotion of it, the um, probably the, the fact that Rashford scores so early affects our emotion in the first half and we go completely off plan and just start running around and, and opening up big spaces. Um so bits that we need to improve, um, but in terms of togetherness, work ethic, um, quality against a, a top side, massive club. Um, second half, I thought we were by far the better side, um, which which takes some doing. So disappointed for the lads because to put that much in and and be heavily punished for some some sort of small errors in detail is is tough for them to take. But um, very very proud of also of what they managed to produce there. The window again. Uh, no, you haven't managed to bring the striker in. Your, your emotions on that? Firstly, I mean, today to, to, to have to leave, well, to be working all day in the office trying to figure out stuff with Matt and the recruitment team and and be prepping for a game against Manchester United and then to have to leave the office at five to come and do the game and literally just been updated there. I hadn't heard a thing since five till. 30 seconds before you've asked me the question is is a crazy way to to spend a deadline day I think playing football matches on the deadline day is, is a terrible idea um, secondly yeah we didn't manage to get a nine done a um, few that I really liked um, and we couldn't afford any um, we could afford some but not ones that I thought would, would help us so um, as I said the group is the group and we, we, we get to work on, on trying to maximise it You've given the impression to us several times that uh, when you let Sasha go, go that was in the understanding that you'd be able to bring someone in. So is that disappointing that you, you've let him, would you let him go knowing that you know now? Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't really want to go through what ifs. Um, it's important that, that Sasha plays. I don't, I don't think he'd have played much for us. Um, it's important that Fabio plays. Um, he wouldn't have played much for us. So... Are we short of a number nine? Yeah. We're, I felt we were short of a number nine when them two were still here. So we're still short of a number nine. Um, so that, that, that that's where we are. Um, and like I said, it really keen not to just panic and sign anybody. Fi financial stuff was was an issue for us. Um, speaking to Chelsea uh, about Brozier for a lot of the day. Um, I, 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 haven't, I haven't checked, but I presume he's gone to Fulham. We, we couldn't match... We just couldn't afford to do it financially with where it ended up, um, and, that, that, and that's where we are as a football club. So, but we haven't been deducted ten points. Um, we're still together. We're still putting in performances that that show we're all together, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll try and keep it moving that way between now and the end of the season. So, uh, Chani will be back soon, hopefully. Don't want to wish him bad in any of his games, but Chani will be back soon. And um, as you saw today, the group is is willing to give everything and, and I'm working as hard as I can to maximise what we produce. Just Joe Hodges wants to keep it going. Was there a temptation to be a bit, a bit selfish and keep him around for the numbers? Yeah, I think centre midfield providing, well, unless we have a, a disastrous spell, um, we are fairly well covered. You know, we generally play with two. Um, Booba won't be away for too long now and we have Zhao, Mario, Tommy, um, who have all been excellent and uh, Booba to come back who has also had some real good games for us so 
the one area of the field where we probably could afford to let Joe. Joe's really keen to play and he's at a point of his career where I think he needs to um, and I can't guarantee that he will here. Um, so he's he's been allowed to go and, and, and play in the championship, which is a good level for him to, to try and help him progress. Um, if he was a number nine, he definitely wouldn't have gone. Uh, Gary, you obviously brought Nathan Frey on today. Um, considering the lack of number nine signing, how do you manage him now? Because he's also incredibly young, but equally talented, and you need players that can come on and make an impact. Yeah, no, no Nathan, Nathan will be fine. He um, he's going to be he's going to be thrown in to to get some football experience in the Premier League with with where we are at this moment. Um, with a, a, actual number nines, obviously him and Chani, really the only two at the club. JJ does a, a, a decent job there for us. He's, he's working very hard at it. Um, and Nathan Nathan will get some opportunities maybe that he, he didn't expect to get at this point in his career. Um, don't know how long he played today, but whatever it was, 25 minutes, half an hour, whatever, against Manchester United at this stage is a, an incredible experience for him. Um, so, yeah, I'll make... I'll have a real clear understanding of where Nathan is and what he needs and when he needs to exposure to things and when he needs to be protected from things we'll stay on top of. Um, but as always, with the best interests of the group at heart and, and trying to progress the football club. Uh, just on him, sort of what is the most impressive parts of him as a football? I mean, within minutes of him coming on, he makes a, a really intelligent run that doesn't get found. Mm -hmm. To have that confidence within minutes of coming on to be making those runs against world-class defenders at Manchester United. That's the kind of signs that Spurs need to see from him. Yeah, he's been around a lot of the work that we do. So all the work that we've done with Chani or JJ um, or the other attacking players, he's, he's been around. So he understands the, the structure and what we try and do. Um, so that gives him a good chance. The fact that he's unbelievably willing, um, incredibly determined and and has some quality gives him a, a chance of being able to affect games like this obviously it is a big ask for him he's 18 he's not played a great deal of senior football um, but he's going to get some opportunities now and we'll, we'll we'll get to find out exactly where he is we move on to Chelsea one o'clock tomorrow